We went from homeless to millionaires in two months, and this is the story of that. Do Timmy with the in intro. So I posted about this. I've I've been very open about this part of our story for a while now, and I got some interest in it recently. People asking for the full story or like a link to as to regarding as to how we did it. So this is the story of that, basically. So this was back, I'm just going to jump straight into it. Back in October um, 2022, we were living with my wife, Yana's parents, for a year. Um, so we had decided like in February of that year to move there whilst we were using our the house that we built in a different suburb as an investment property and we would stay with them for a year we had an agreement with her dad um we offered to pay rent and he was like no no no, don't do that it's fine um and we we're gonna stay there for a year and towards the end of 2022 we we're gonna look to get our own place like a rental um in a place that we liked better than uh, the other place that we had and we wanted to obviously use the investment property accordingly so what happened was like I said in the video, was there was some back and forth, like a little bit of tension between her dad, uh, Yana's dad, and myself and, and Yana. And it basically all culminated in one night him saying to us, I can't wait for you to fail because he just didn't believe in the business so I can laugh at you behind your back. And off of that, we had been like, we'd had some run-ins, but it was always like, okay, no, maybe it's the better thing for the relationship, the right thing for us to stay here right now. But then after that, it was like, no, nah, it's it's time to leave. And it was in relation to our business uh, with my brother-in-law, Vincent's, um, and his friend were starting up a cleaning business together. And... The, her dad was just like, no, nah, you can't do that. These numbers aren't right. Um, but Yana's numbers were in fact right. They were a, an underestimation to be safe as well. And so it was just like, you know, what? we don't need to be around this. We know how important it is to be around the right people. And we decided to move out at the butt crack of a Wednesday at midnight, basically. And Vincent at the time was still working um, and is teenager doing some shift work so we went to pick him up we called him said hey bro i know we said we we're going to leave end of the year um but we're going now and we had offered and said he could come with us if he wanted to so it was like the offer's still there if you want to come with us we actually we don't have anywhere to go um but we're going to figure it out on the fly so if you want to come you are more than welcome to if you'd rather not because it's so last minute you can stay uh with your parents that's completely fine so we, he, he decided to come with us. So understanding the importance of um, having the right people was first and foremost, and just having that absolute faith in God, it was just basically in that moment, it was like, this is the right thing to do. So you just got to go all in on that. And I'll, I'll say this now before I continue anymore. That is very much in alignment with my personality. Um, I'm a very like, once I decide on something, I'm very persistent, perseverant, uh, stubborn is something I have been called growing up as well. And I'm like, yeah, I am. Um, and so is Yana, to be fair. But that's also what I believe has con contributed so much to our success in business. Because even when people are like, nah, you can't do this. This is the wrong thing. Be smart about this. If we knew it was our calling from God, then we would just be like, yep, all in, no matter what, we'll quit a job on a dime, we'll move out, make ourselves homeless on a dime as well and have nowhere to go because this is what we're called for, absolute faith. And we have absolute faith. So we 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 moved out when picked him up after his shift ended, packed a little bag for him, packed our bags and we we're like, we're gone, we're gone. We just left. Um, and what happened was that night, I'll walk you through a little bit of it. This was pretty indicative of what the whole time was like. I had to look up a few pet friendly places because her rabbit was, our rabbit was staying there. Um, a bit hard to transport her around, but the two dogs were coming with us. There's Zeke in the background. You might be able to see him. So two dogs, a brother, uh, brother-in-law, Yana, and a rabbit with applications. We'd obviously have to put the rabbit on it. And I called up 
a, ho- a few hotels was like, hey, you guys dog friendly, like do you, pet friendly, do you have any rooms available? And they'd be like, oh, no, sorry, none of our pet friendly rooms are available. So this is like midnight, I'm calling up places. We just like went to a little parking lot around the house and yo, what's up, G? Steady faxing. I like it. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, everyone? I didn't say hi to anyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Um, I just start talking a lot of the time um, and let people filter in as they do. But what's up? If you wanna, if, if you wanna say hi, feel free to drop a comment. Um, I'm, I'm always down. I'll read them out. Um, so yeah, just a little dingy car park in Midvale, Midland. Um, if you know Perth, then you know it's uh, not the greatest area in the world. Just calling up places, and we did get one place that was like, "Yeah, we have a dog friendly room," and I was like, "Are you sure it's dog friendly?" pet friendly because we have two dogs with us um yeah remember i met you at the gym when we were training on the bags of course man of course smashing the bags having good times good times what's up g making it happen captain so yeah good times and so i was like are you sure yeah they were like yeah we're sure we've we've got this place um available for us to (laughs) <laughs> and and you were doing those fire kicks. Those were mean, G. Thanks, G. <laughs> I appreciate that. Talking about me hitting the bags um, at the gym that we both go to. So, well, gym. So, um, anyway, we called up this place. They were like, yep, it's dog friendly. Double checked. And we got there and they were like, oh, actually, we're not dog friendly. I can't believe you brought two dogs here. I was like, what do you mean? Like, I just called. We drove half an hour to get here. Um, and they're like, okay. Because it was a mistake on our end, we'll let you stay uh, for tonight. But beyond that, we can't really promise anything. We're like, that's all good. Thank you so much. So we went, stayed there, and it was pretty much straight away. Like, the panic sets in straight away. Immediately, there's that, oh, what have we done? Oh, dear. Of course, like, everyone's going to panic when they make a big move like that. That that feeling, that self-doubt, that's always there. Was this the right move? Are we actually going to be able to do this? Those thoughts do come up. But the biggest thing was, in spite of not having anywhere to go, because we were we, our house that we'd built was fully rented out. I'm going to let this guy down. Um, was fully rented out. So, in spite of that, it's just putting those feelings to the side and saying, you know what? We have absolute faith in God. So, we're just going to do what he has asked of us. And that's what we're doing. So, anytime that did come up, during our time, we just said, no, don't worry about it. Don't even think about it um, because it doesn't serve you. You're doing the thing anyway. You're committed. You're, you're, you're taking action. You know that it's that important to get around the right people. You know that this is what you're called for. So why second guess it? Even for a second, there's no point. When that comes up, just press that down. So that's what we were doing. We were out and about doing that. And so every time when we woke up the next morning, we pretty much went straight into, okay, look for a long-term stay, like a place that we can rent. And uh, in the meantime, we have to sort out short-term stays. And because I was under 25 at the time and we were using like Airbnb and that kind of thing, uh, any short-term stays that you try to book in, they don't like, they tend to fall through because you're like an at-risk or higher-risk person individual because they think that you're booking a last minute to throw a party or something like that it's nothing against them it's just the app so when we had we had like the first time that happened we'd we'd driven for two hours to stay somewhere for like two nights and that's all we had and then one of the the place that we were supposed to go the 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 next day actually it was one night so we were there for two days the place that we were supposed to go they were like, yeah, sorry, we, we've cancelled that one on the day. And we were just like, what is going on? We had it confirmed. We knew we were going to stay there for like three or four nights. And we just were like, okay, we can't, we can't uh, depend on this coming up. Uh, because they, they'd cancelled it last minute. I called them up. I was like, look, dude, uh, I, we just, we're just looking to have our stay go through. We're not going to throw any parties. It's like we're a little family basically and they were like nah sorry because you're under 25 like the app does it by ai or something like that so we we can't override it mike all right sick so that's when we asked some family and friends if they had anywhere we could stay temporarily and there was there there like there was some that that we could stay at shout out to my mate david um 
his parents let us stay there for like a night or two, but it's quite stressful. They had a couple dogs of their own. So it was like we had a night or two and then it was, it was gone. So basically all the places that we had were very short term. And during this time we applied to like a hundred plus houses, um, over houses. We were applying to long-term rentals, doing the thing, putting forth our best foot with applications. But again, under 25, no formal rental history. It was all, it was all like, Oh yeah, and two dogs and a rabbit, most places don't want to let you stay there because they're worried about pets damaging the place and you tend to lose out to families and that kind of thing with kids. Uh, plus, because due to the nature of our work being all online, it just seems like it's not as stable as a normal like nine to five job, that kind of thing. So we were applying to a lot of places. There are a lot of, I think half of the time I actually didn't sleep. I was, would stay up all night, like finish off applications, look for more places, um, write up personalized letters to go with everything. And yeah, so did that and we stayed with different places. One of the places we stayed at was like a little church farm area that our, our church kindly was like, you can stay here for as long as you need. And we're like, don't worry, we'll, we'll be out of here soon. Don't, don't even stress it. But the pastor was like, don't worry, as long as you need. Um, it was a really, it's, it's a nice place. It's just a, a farm is all. And my brother-in-law, Vincent, and I have really bad hay fever. So like our faces were swollen all day. We were like, oh, trying to do applications up all night, that kind of thing. Um, and obviously not letting the dogs go chase all the animals around. So that was fun times. We, I'm going to wrap that saga up, but we applied for this place um, and I took a little time that, so we were waiting for like an hour and a half to hear back after we'd put in the application. I actually put it in a bit late because I lost that one, uh, for this place that we really liked. We were like, well, this place is great in Wilson. Um, it's like a six bedroom house kind of thing. And so we put in the application. I wrote up a personalized thing for Timmy, Zeke, and like made little animal profiles for them. And pretty much we were just waiting to hear and we, we went for a little drive came around and they were like, yeah, you got the place. It was actually between you and a little family. And we actually, my wife, uh, the wife of the guy, Mike, who let us rent out the place was like, actually, we really, we like the dogs. They're like, yeah, give it to the dogs. So we're very grateful. That was a one year lease. There was, there were a couple of others that we got really close for and fell through, but they were like three months, six months ones. And like, I'm not proud to admit it, but I have a bit of a temper um, sometimes, or I have in the past. And I like there. There were times where I was yelling at the steering wheel whilst we were driving down the thing because they called us. We're like, "Yeah, sorry, we gave it to someone else." Actually, I was like, "No!" Like the stress was getting to me. <laughs> um, so it was luck because I was like, even though in retrospect it was ten days, but it's ten days of not actually knowing if. It's just going to be 10 days, not actually knowing where you're even going to stay the next day and not knowing, um, like not knowing if you're going to get a place. Plus it's like, everyone's always like, oh, the market's bad. This is actually something that I talked over with my mum. little tangent here, but we were going to stay at my parents' place, but they were like, you guys need to sleep out in the garage and that cause the dogs and we're like, that's fine. But we got in there and I talked to my mum. she was like, all right, I, I love my my mom, I'm not throwing her under the bus or anything. I completely understand where she's coming from. Um, but she said, I feel like I've raised you wrong. Like you should not be doing this. You shouldn't have even stayed at Yana's parents' place without paying any rent or anything like that. Um, I can't believe you're doing this. There's no way you can do this with two dogs and a rabbit. And like you're under 25 and the market's so bad. So all I did, I just remember kneeling down, holding her hand because she was sitting on her bed crying. And just, I was like, I know you don't understand it, but trust me, it's going to work out. We are going to do this. Um, and just trust me, I, ha I had explained it already up until that point, but she was, she kept saying, how, how's I've already explained it to you. I can't go over this again. Like there's, there's just no point me, me telling you again, uh, but I love you and it's all going to work out. And understandably, she's just worried about me. So I, I don't hold any of that against her. I actually really appreciate her being honest with me. Um, and, that, that, and my dad was worried, but he's, he's a pretty cool, quiet guy sometimes when it comes to those kind of matters. So, yeah, obviously they just wanted the best for us. So we got the place. Um, obviously, 
and she used to be in real estate. So she's like, when the market's bad and it's hard for people like you to get a place, but we're just like, it's going to work. I can feel it in my giblets. Um, so we got a place, market was bad and all that. And, you know, it's it's 10 days and like when you're in it, it's 24 hours a day, every day um, that you're, you've got this panic, this stress weighing on you in the back of your mind that you might not actually have somewhere to put your family up. The, the next night's not guaranteed. You might not even have a roof. You might have to sleep in the car kind of thing. Um, and obviously that, that all comes down to me because that was my decision. I'm the husband. I'm the leader of this little family unit. So it, it, every consequence of that decision comes comes back to me. Um, so I have... I'm so thankful that my wife uh, or Yana, I'm just going to refer to her as Yana from now on, um, trusted me to to do that. And she was all in. She was putting in so much effort. She was even like doing a lot business wise to keep the businesses going because my business is just went on maintenance um, or my, my coaching business. I was like, I've just got to focus on this. Um, and she was like, well, if we're going to be in this for a long time, you need to keep building your business. And I was like, I can see the merit in that. But this is, if we do this, I actually told her, I was like, um, in two weeks, we can do this if we're all in on this. And I've had a big thing about that number uh, because it's the idea of being all in, doing everything you need to do, showing up and like overcoming that self-doubt with positive action. Two weeks, you'll see results for whatever you're doing in two weeks. And that's come up a couple of times, but this time it was two weeks, uh, within two weeks. So it was like uh, within the 10 days, we did that. We got the place and... And then two months later, millionaires, boom. So what I actually bridged the gap between that and the other one is I was working with a mentor at the time, um, like a business coach, and I didn't really like his stuff. I'd watched like three of his preliminary videos um, and he sent me a couple of voice notes that I was like, oh, okay, I don't really like how he, like, how he coaches um, and his approach if I'm being completely honest, it was, it was, it was just very scarce. It was very like, don't compete with us or we'll crush you. You can't anyway. So I'm not going to go into that too much. Um, I don't hold, hold any malice or anything like that. It just is what it is. Um, so cause I didn't like what he was doing in coaching. Um, and we'd paid 10,000 up front for it. I was just like, well, I'm not going to use any of his stuff. I'm just going to put that to the side and do my own thing. So I really leaned into doing what I wanted to do content wise. I hired someone to do some messages. Oh, Yana's in the chat. Hired someone to do some, um, some, what do you call it? Some like messaging for me. And like, uh, I hired a team member basically just after we got over our little homeless thing. If I have that right. Oh, it was just before that actually. So they were doing some messaging there. So that was at least building the business a little bit whilst we were doing that side of things. And what happened was I really leaned into doing the kind of content, uh, and coaching from a way that was like guided by God. Cause I was like, I have skills. I have like a few months worth of pretty decently high level skills uh, in business. And so just got to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. So that was from one of my sides. And from Yana's side, there were there are a few things going on because at the time she was running like six or set, five to seven businesses. I know it's between one of those two numbers. Hopefully she can correct me. She can either hear me from out there because um, she's sitting outside or she might comment in the live, but she was running some businesses and one of them was actually uh, real estate focused, um, which is why we left our the house that we built in the first place. So all in all, during this small period of time, we were making 300K a year between the two of us. And like a big part of it is for the real estate business, we were waiting on a loan to come through. It was like in that final stage, it had, it had, been, it had been delayed like six more weeks than it had to because of the accountant we had at the time. Kept calling up being like, oh, are you sure about this expense? Like three times for the same expense, um, which is cool. We just don't work with him anymore. <laughs> um, it just doesn't get like the business coaching side of things. Um, so we were like, man, this took way too long, but we'd already done so much with them. So we couldn't have all that to say, we couldn't have a sudden spike in expenses. Otherwise all of like six months worth of work to get this, this loan set up for, to help with the business. Um, it would all have gone. So we basically, we couldn't have, we couldn't suddenly be staying in Airbnbs and that for months on end kind of thing. We At one stage, we were actually like, maybe we got to get a tent and just like pitch a tent somewhere. Um, thankfully, it didn't come to that or staying in the car. But yeah, so 
we did that and once we'd moved into our place we were like we called it the the conscious entrepreneur house whatever you want to call it but it was it was big for us because that's that was our first place that was our own that we really loved the place we loved the environment and it was all of us just being around it we were all it was just four of us had moved in or three of us had moved in we were all like very entrepreneurial driven going to going to make big things happen with our businesses and that was one of the big keys that's why we did it in the first place to get around just that because when you wake up every day and you got people doubting you but they're in your environment it really takes away from you and when you've got people who don't share the same beliefs and the same vision and way to get to that vision then it's it's like you're basically fighting every day to just get started um even energetically um which sounds a bit chi woo woo, but that energy is there, and it's in the back of your mind, like, oh, I hope we don't talk about it today. I, I hope they don't say anything, um, kind of thing. Or if it comes up, then you have to like, you have to argue your case for why you're even doing it. But if you get around people who, and I think it's important to not even be around people who are neutral. If they're like, oh, cool, good for you, but they're not doing the same thing, they don't share the vision, then there's not much point in staying around people like that because then you're fighting to get to thriving. So instead of getting out of negative to neutral, which is like if you have people that are negative and against you, um, you're fighting from neutral to thriving. But if you just cut out all the neutral people as well and you just surround yourself with thriving people, same vision, same vehicle to get there and you're all in, you all share the same beliefs, then you could call it creating an echo chamber, confirmation bias, whatever you want to call it. But I think it's so powerful because you're like, okay, I know this is possible. Yes, everyone says, no, you can't be millionaires um, within five years kind of thing. It's hard, the market, like there's super saturated markets that we got into and they get more and more saturated every year. But what's the point in believing all that stuff? There are, I believe the number's like 1,700 new millionaires every year or something like that. And we're just like, we're called by God. We'd written out our plan um, like 14 months or 10 months before this happened, actually. Um, we wrote down part of our five-year plan. Um, what was put on our hearts was like, be millionaires, be making a million a year to serve God. Use that to help serve others um, and ultimately serve God. So, sorry, that was, that was a bit of a tangent there. But we were just like, it's so important to get around the right people and we were fueling each other we were making everything was so inspired and it it, it 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 continues to be to this day obviously there are ups and downs but everything was so inspired because every day you'd wake up and you knew you were completely surrounded by people on it we were all on it we shared a vision together we were starting businesses um well only one new businesses was being was being started but we were solidifying strengthening the current businesses and like you don't even have to worry about running into someone who's not really going to get it. And it's so freeing. You you wouldn't believe how freeing that is to even be able to have full confidence in your own vision and the things that are put on your heart. So I'm so grateful that we got to do that. And like I said, we we were running our businesses, getting better and better. And a big part of it is my style of content that I really enjoy is sharing my story. Um, I first heard it put that way from Alex Homozy, but just sharing your experience, which is something I've always done. And so I started to lean into that more and more. Here's how we did this. Here are my thoughts on this because of this experience, that kind of thing. So we just basically all that to say, all everything was firing on all cylinders. So within two months, then we got that uh, to that million a year side of things. And it was all great, baby. A lot of that well, not a lot of that, but a solid amount came from the real estate side of things as well, which interestingly, this is a story for another day, um, which I've told before. But during that time before the millionaire side of things, I'm pretty sure when we first move in into the, the house in um, in like our millionaire house, um, my wife had gotten a job offer from someone who had been talking to her and wanting to get her to work for her and she was and was like you can make 500k a year working for for me for, for this guy uh plus commission in in the real estate side of things so this guy could see yana's value and was like this is like your starting job offer you have no official background in real estate but he could tell that she had the mind for it and it was pretty crazy but just trusted her i think she 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 the way she tells it which i'm pretty sure is right because i'm a bit forgetful sometimes is like when she first told me um the 500k thing i was like what oh okay that what oh just like surprise taken aback at like you turned down a 500k job okay um but it was very much like all right cool like 
I'm all in whatever you think is the right thing. I think this part's right. Whatever you think is the right thing, there's no point in working for someone else and being restricted because then all of your time is going into that and you're capped. Um, even the commission will have a cap and all of that. So she decided to go all in on her side of things. Well, well, we worked together. So all of the things came together. So that's honestly the biggest thing. And we were talking to a couple of our clients about it the other day about how it sounds so chi woo woo like oh surely there's some secret strategy oh you did this 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 and this 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 happened and then boom millionaires in such a short period of time so even going from 300k a year to uh the millionaire thing that's that's pretty big like people don't do that in two months a lot of the time um well most people say that that tends not to be the case but we're very blessed in that sense and it sounds, like I said, it sounds very like airy-fairy. Oh, you just believe, conceive, believe, achieve kind of thing. But it really does come down to that because the strategies are very simple. It's like, it's it's very basic what you do. Like with my coaching, it's very much like get clients, get them great results, know how to run your own business and do uh, utilize value-based pricing um, and foster great relationships with clients. Be a... Uh, uh, be a strong leader within your own business so that people want to keep paying you, they trust you, and they get great results. They want to keep coming back and working with you and go out of your way to put in heaps of effort to share that with everyone else and like give freely, give that value freely with your content, with what you say, with the conversations you have. Don't necessarily mentor people for free because we want to help people, not enable them, which is another thing in and of itself. But that, that, that uh, that mentality of giving and really just wanting to help out as much as possible and having no secrets like everything cards are all on the table here's what we're going to do here's how we're going to do it here's how we're going to help and knowing that most people just want help implementing when it comes to coaching specifically i can speak to the businesses that that i run um specifically and i know my my wife or yana does the personal branding side of things so she's a business coach in that sense as well get clients excellent results and boom it 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 all just flows from there focus on that quality and providing as much value as possible being as valuable as possible because that also means constantly um, making sure you're at your best and making sure that you always develop more and more skills so that you can help other people better and better and a big part of that being able to do that to the fullest extent is um no uh sorry you being at your best and you respecting your time and your calling from god so that's all that to say the biggest two things like i kind of said the other day um were the beliefs having the right beliefs because if you have the right beliefs every action is in alignment with that belief and the beliefs are what will set you on target to the outcome and will also allow you to fully and properly execute a strategy to its fullest potential that's going to be the biggest thing and the second thing which is why we did the homeless thing as well is being around the right people you got to pay whatever price it takes to get around the right people it doesn't have to be with your money like obviously the homeless thing wasn't oh we're gonna pay someone to make us homeless or something like that we were paying the price with our time our effort our energy to get around the right people to move away from people that didn't believe in the vision or couldn't see it didn't understand it and we're kind of like muddying the water essentially so we decided to get away from those people and get to even though it was just us it, it's not like we we started living with someone new it was just us so getting around that and having that be the entirety of your existence is such a crucial aspect of it and that's why a lot of people see a lot of success when in programs um, when they move away somewhere somewhere move away from your family move away from your hometown that kind of thing because it's a different environment where it's like oh this is happening like i'm making things happen now so that's a very large part of well i i'd say honestly without the foundation of those things and obviously with that the beliefs comes with the absolute faith in god that whatever he's called you for have no doubt just go all in on it I'm very big on that. Um, it's not necessarily for everyone, but I'm very much, and I have to be careful with it when I say it, so I give this caveat. It's, it, it suits my personality and my skill set to be able to 
quit the job straight away whenever you know it's not right for you. Um, even if you don't know what's next, you know that you're just going to find the right thing and spending another moment in something that you know isn't right for you or you don't like is not worth it. So I'm very much the quit the job, move out, make yourself homeless kind of person because um, we have done it once more since then. Understanding that it really just boils down to beliefs in people. Those are two of the biggest things because they are going to affect how well you do what you're doing. Because, yeah, like to be honest, strategies to get to earning a million a year, not that complex. They're, they're very simple strategies. It's do the fundamentals of business, do them at scale. Anyone looking for something quick, some kind of hack or anything like that is not going to find what they're looking for because... The, the secret's just in in the work and doing the, the deeper core work that helps with that, um, like I've just talked about, because it's like if you address those beliefs, all of your actions are going to be in alignment with that belief, because if you don't even believe it's possible, you're not going to do it in the first place, or if you do, you're going to be second-guessing yourself every step of the way, oh, can, can I actually do this? Is it actually going to work? But if you know it's going to work, you know it's going to work. So that's pretty much that story of homeless to millionaires, how we did it, why we did it. Um, and yeah, to be honest, like I said, like I said many times before, I'm very blessed with the, the journey that we've had and even the attributes that I have to be able to lead in some capacity, to inspire um, and to have any idea of what to, any semblance of any idea of what to do in these kind of situations and lead my family through them. I don't think it comes from me. Like it, it is something that I have been given uh, and blessed with by God and my upbringing, which all comes from God as well. You know, parents putting me into certain things, uh, me having a certain personality be even before I did activities and being able to have that faith. I think that is the biggest thing that people do. They move that successful people do, they move in, abs well, I'll just say that's what we've done, not to necessarily call ourselves successful, but I feel like we've achieved a great deal and we're blessed to be able to do that and have much more in store. But we just move in absolute faith, not by sight alone, not like, oh, I'll only do this if you guarantee that the outcome is going to occur, uh, that I'm going to make a million, that I'm going to get somewhere to live, that I'm going to get the job or get the income. It doesn't work like that by that sight and that guarantee. And that's why the biggest risk takers um, and the successful people are the ones that understand that it's it's not about a guaranteed outcome. The guarantee is you. If you secure yourself and you're like, yes, I'm going to be the right guy, the right person for all of this right now by making this choice. Because like Yana says, it's not about the investment itself. It's about who you are when you make that investment. And what that means is you've got to decide, I'm going to commit, I'm going to do this and follow through. You keep following through. It's who you forge yourself into in those moments of difficulty that determine the kind of person that you are that's through your choices because it's our choice to believe have faith in god and take action every single day in alignment with that <laughs> so one of my dogs is is barking in his sleep um i don't know which one it is but yeah so those would be the biggest things those would be why we did it and that's that's just honestly because we study we look at a lot of the paths of the successful people what they've done and when people come up asking them for the secrets, I'm going to stop saying that because I know like my guys know that it's not about that. They know that it's not, it, it's literally just comes down to something as simple as people, the right people, you becoming the right person and getting around the right people and getting around the right people is actually going to have a massive influence on the kind of person that you become. So yeah, when it comes to that side of things, I'll say, I'll say it again because it's so so powerful um, and I have absolute faith in that. Be the right person, get around the right people. So being the right person means having the right beliefs, um, getting around the right people is doing that side of things, whatever the cost. And then as a result of that, you will execute any strategy, any uh, technical plan or anything like that to its fullest. And any plan is going to work. Fundamentals of business done at scale and done as well as possible, being slightly innovative as well, thinking about what you're doing and having that long-term focus. Like for us, it's always been 
the five year, 10 year, 20 plus lifetime vision for it. Not just where we're going to be in six months. Yes, we can work backwards from there, but that's really important to not be attached to those timelines as well. It's not, God, give me this by this time. It's like, hey, whenever it's right for you to put this on my path, so be it. And I am open for that. Even if I don't know what the right thing is, I pray that I can see what the right thing is and see that at the right time and receive those things openly, having full faith and full trust and understanding that it, it it's just a choice. It really is just a choice to do those things. And it is a simple choice, but not an easy one. It is not easy to just up and become that person one day. Obviously, you have to choose to do that and keep choosing to do that because it's not like you make the choice once. After you do that, the path becomes harder. You can argue. It's like when you first become a Christian. The path gets harder because it is less, it is a much less walked path, and it is it's just a it's just a harder path. It's uphill. And the fact is that if you choose that for yourself, you need you need to be the right person, have the right beliefs. And continue to have those beliefs because that will drive that and have the right people around you. That is so huge because that will that will determine how you show up. And then obviously the strategy is what you do when you show up as well. But that will make pretty much any strategy work. I've seen it work in a multitude of... We've made it work in a multitude of businesses. We've helped clients with that kind of thing as well. And we've we've observed it from other people. That's That's why... A lot of why we did it in the first place, like we've paid a lot to learn these skills as well, both time, um, effort, energy, and money. But yeah, those are the biggest things. Like if you can just do those things, get into the right places, the right rooms, remove, and if you're not even sure, like a, a practical way of doing this, obviously if you're 50 minutes in, 45 minutes in with me now, then you probably have a bit of bit, better idea. Um, remove negatives. First, that is a great way to start. So if you're not sure, remove people that aren't right and keep seeking out the people that are right because they're like there's an inherent imbalance because it's like the 99% versus the 1%. And it's even less than 1% if you think about it, it's like 0.001% or something like that. But hey, up Neil. Um, but the right people, they are rarer, they are fewer. So you need to also get rid of the wrong people. Just be like, nope, that's okay. If you're not the right person for this period of time right now, it doesn't take away from any kind of relationship, friendship we've had beforehand, but I'm going this way. And if you're not going there, I can't take you with me. And holding on to that person is only going to hold you back. So you just be like, cool, that was what it was. You you stay here. I, I'm off. See you later. All the best. Love you and wish you got you wish you the best. But that's it. That's all that you have to do by the way that um, as a start is like eliminate people that you're like if you because you can tell, you can feel it in you in your giblets, in your spirit. Like, is this person right? Are they aligned? And even logically, you can be like, okay, do they want to do what I want to do? Do they believe these things? Do I get invigorated when I talk to them in a like let's let's make something of my life kind of sense or is it neutral or do they drag me down are they actually like an energy drainer essentially and if they're neutral or an energy drainer in my opinion goodbye goodbye because it's just that important it is your imperative to do that because in my opinion it's like for, for myself I owe it to God to do that um, because he's given me so much as well and even if, if that wasn't, this is the calling, this is the meaning, the experience, this is what life is about, to be able to do this and help in any capacity and to even realize your potential and your calling um, at, I consider myself pretty young, um, is a, a blessing that most people don't come across. So for me, I'm like, I have to pass this on, I have to pay it forward, I have to help as many people as is right for me to. Um, and yeah, because things are fantastic. So a big, a big thing that, uh, you need to do is cut those people out. Cause that makes you the more of the right person. Um, cause if you think about it, if you're interacting with, like, I don't interact with a lot of people on a regular basis, but if on a regular basis, say you hang out with three people and one of them is the wrong person, that's a third of your interactions are holding you back from where you want to go. So cut, cut out, but also 
be open to seeking and getting into the, the, the right places, getting around the right people, whatever the cost. And um, honestly, that's the thing. Obviously, at the right time, um, in my opinion, it's like if it's really right, then you'll always the right people make that work no matter what. And yeah, but you know, everyone's got their own journey and that's the biggest thing. But I feel like from observing a lot of other people, from having done it ourselves, from having helped other people with similar things, it's 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 just so clear, so evident. Um, you can call it confirmation bias, call it whatever you want, but I feel like I'm just observing and, and telling it like it is, what's happened, what I've seen, what I've experienced, what I've lived, and what others have and from those who are willing to share. And it's like, wow, okay, when you when you see it that many times and you break it down that much, you're like, all right, it's not a coincidence coincidence uh not a quinky dink and yeah i mean you've got to be willing to do whatever it takes in my honest opinion um for me i'm willing to do whatever it takes to serve god i'm willing to make us homeless willing to put us in debt willing to pay whatever the price to get around the right people i'm willing to cut out whoever um obviously not my wife but that's like our marriage serves god um um and yeah so those would be the biggest things there. I'll say it one more time. Get around the right people. Be the right person. And those two things feed on each other because a lot of it will be uh, your the way that you speak and the things that you say will be very symptomatic of that. So if you find yourself saying, oh, I don't believe I can actually be I mean, I don't think I can actually do this, then you know that something's something's gonna right. And then if your actions aren't in alignment with the goal, oh, okay, I believe there's something wrong with the beliefs as well otherwise i would be continuing to act that way yeah so beliefs drive your actions even on a subconscious level which result in outcomes and yeah just got to align them all and it'll be all gravy baby i'll catch you guys on the flippity flip my camera here died so you just get to see black if you're watching this on youtube and uh yeah take care all the best keep it all gravy baby